Okay, my, my name is Carlos Urrea. I am the Thai dream breeder for Brazil. And today I'm going to be talking about variety development for dry edible beans. And Nebraska, this is data from Nebraska Department of Agriculture. We are number one in Great Northern bean production in the United States. And we are proud of that. We are number two in Pinto and Library Kimmy bean production in the United States. And in 2016, and we have been for the last Five, six years, we have number uh, three in total dry table bean production in the United States. Do you know who you're behind? Uh, we are uh, number one is uh, North Dakota, and the reason is it's North Dakota is uh, a uh, North Dakota plant uh, grows about 850,000 acres, <laughs> and we have only 170,000. Wow. And number two is uh, Michigan. Yeah, it's black beans. Yeah, black beans and red beans. Okay, this is uh, the bean production in this is Nebraska, and uh, it's located in the western part of the country. Uh, this is uh, I work in this uh, experimental station. This is Pahando Regional Extension Center. This is located in Scotts Bluff, and these are the county that count for, for most of the production. Over here, this one, two, and three. This is Scotts Bluff. Uh, this is uh, Bosque County, and this is Morris County. They account for eighty percent of the total bean production in Nebraska. And this is the data from 1990 to 2017. This is the number of acres. I'm going a little bit down anyway, but I have been studying for the last a couple of years and it depends on the, the price of the corn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the productivity, you see the yields in 1990, uh, of around 1970 pounds per acre. Now we are at 25, uh, 25, 20. We have better practices, we have better genetics, better varieties. And the production is around uh, 3 million, 9,100 9, weights. And we are exporting uh, beans to the Dominican Republic, European Union, Mexico, you see all, all different countries, Turkey, India, Malaysia, Chile, Ethiopia, and Canada. And the mission of the University of Nebraska Dry Bean Program is to support the Nebraska bean industry through research and extension education. And we are located here in, in the western part of the country. And this is, uh, we get le less than 16 inches of total precipitation. I mean, this is pretty bright area. And that's why uh, we don't grow, or there are no dry beans grown in the eastern part of the country because there is a pretty precipitation in some places that are more than 34 inches. And dry beans are susceptible to many diseases, a lot of diseases, viral diseases, fungal diseases, and bacterial diseases. These are the main market classes in the United States. Number one is pinto beans, and then followed by there's navy, blacks, green organs, small reds, pinks, dark red kings, and dark red kings. And all of, all of them, all these market classes, belong to the Paseolus vulgaris species. Objectives of my program, uh, high yielding varieties, because uh, you know, the growers, they, they, they like to put more, you know, Please, in the pot, right? Most of the <laughs> Resistant to multiple diseases. I mentioned that they are susceptible to bacterial, fungal, and also viral diseases. Plant architecture, you know, the bean industry is moving towards direct harvest. I mean, it's, I would say, like 30% of, uh, of the total area is under uh, direct harvest. Earliness, because the bean needs to be ready by September 15 to the 20th because of the early frost. Mm. Efficiency on the low soil water conditions. Beans in Nebraska are 100% irrigated. But there are, some, oh, that, that mean there are some water restrictions in place. I mean, if we develop beans that are able to grow under soil, low soil water conditions, I mean, we, as the grow is gonna have the option to use the model from a different crop. Sea quality. You see that we are exporting beans to different countries. I mean, 
made the Nebraska more competitive. We have one of the best qualities in, in the United States. It's slow darkening. This is happening with the pintos. Um, the pinto beans you see here to the left, these are normal beans. I will expose those beans with UVC light. And they change the color. I mean, you see the, how dark they are. Over here, these are the slow darkening beans, and they don't change the color. I mean, they have a light shell, you know, light in a way. They can, you know, uh, they can keep the light. Is there anything besides cosmetic reasons besides how it looks for this slow darkening? Is, is there one of the reasons because they look sad? I mean, if you go to the supermarket, you will see this even like this, you will see that that's not more cloth. And this was more fresh. Mm -hmm. So does it taste different though? Uh, they, they taste the same anyway. We are throwing mm -hmm. some tests and we're cooking, what is that, cooking the beans. And the, actually the slow darkening bean cooked a little bit faster than the, mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the normal beans. Right? And also the nutritional value. I, we are uh, working with biofortification. I mean, working with the iron and seeing content in the seeds. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see, we are trying to, here is kind of, Playing the pop, the power ball, you know. I mean, putting so many, so many <laughs> plays, uh, trying to win the lottery anyway. <laughs> okay, this is slide summarized my program. Uh, you see uh, over here there are different boxes. These different boxes means a uh, different uh, growing season. I mean, or, or different year. And I start uh, making the crosses. I mean, for us to be, uh, you know, for being a real, that's the variability. My cross uh, beans are self pollinated. I mean, uh, we have to cross main point from one plant to another plant in order to create variability. If we cross P1 by P2, and then we just generate the hybrid seed, it's called the F1. And then every generation, the beans are gaining in homozygosity because when we release a bean, we like to give a bean to the grower that has a uniform in, in the color of the flower, has to be the same, the same size, the same plant height, the same maturity, and so on, anyway. I mean, if you move down here, going this way, we are gaining homozygosity, and we, in all different steps, we are, uh, remember the objective that I mentioned before, we are selecting for disease resistance, for kill, for early, and so on anyway, in every step. And um, finally, we go to the, we call the mother and baby trial, these are on farm trials, and this is uh, helping us for releasing the cultivars. Either we can release the cultivar here as a variety or, or a cultivar or germoplasm that can be used for other breeders, or we can recycle the germoplasm and bring it back here and start you know, the process again. Process again. We do use uh, with, uh, these uh, regional bean trials. You see the different stuff here, our asterisks. Um, these are the, where our beans are grown in different states across the United States. We have uh, winter nurseries. Uh, you see they grow in New Zealand and Chile and Puerto Rico. And that's a good excuse for me to escape from the winter <laughs> Actually, I'm heading in, in the couple, in the next two weeks, I'm heading to Chile and then New Zealand. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we use uh, molecular markers. And this is, uh, I'll explain this in a little more details later on. Um, here, I do have also been working on garbanzos or chickpeas, and we have uh, the educational component. I mean, we have the research component, we have the extension component, and we have the uh, educational component. There. Over here, it's showing the beans are self pollinated, I and mean, when the blossom is close, I mean, that's, that's why, I mean, that's the time when we start making the emasculation and then bringing pollen from one plant uh, from one plant to another. You see that I'm tagging here the flower after being pollinated. Here I'm emasculating the beans, I mean removing the, the, the male from the flower, from the blossom, and already uh, brought the pollen to this uh, flower. And you see this is a hybrid seed after being pollinated. And this is a, uh, usually these are my hybrids during um, every year, I, I create about 120 different combinations. And those different combinations within different market classes, I work with nine different market classes. Um, it, within 
every combination I try to make minimum 20 combinations. We are we are busy all the you know the time and winter time the growers are asking us what did you guys do in winter we are in the greenhouse and we we'll say we are back in the properties. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing is when we make the crosses, I do use this approach. If we cross something good with something good, I hopefully we're gonna get something better. <laughs> but it's not it's not always the case anyway. We are using the race concept, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I do prefer to use multiple parental crosses because I can get more recombinants. And if I get more recombinants, I can get more trays. You, you saw the list of the trays I'm trying to incorporate. You can get more you know, at once. And we have to use different locations and complementary nurseries for selecting for multiple disease resistance in a short period of time. Beans are from the Americas. I work before for, for the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. They, at that time, long time ago anyway, uh, we were able to grow the, uh, the beans that were in the, in the collection and there were around 25,000 different kinds of beans. Right now, this life, they have 37,000 different kinds of beans. And we, uh, we were able to grow the beans in different locations. We, we did characterize the beans, and then we were able to group the beans in two centers of original domestication. One, the Middle America, and the other one, the South, South or Andean uh, Center of Original Domestication. As you see, this is different in seed size. These guys over here are larger seeds. Over here, this, some of these beans, they grow to six months. I mean, we cannot grow these beans in the United States anyway. Uh, within this uh, Middle America, we have over here, you can see this is a Great Northern bean, and this is a Pinto bean. That means they belong to the, this Durango race. And we also, we start making crosses within uh, and among the different, different groups. And we found one of the best combinations is called the Durango, with this in Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica, you see, it's more reds, maybe blacks, and we can get the best combination and use this for money. Are any of those Mesoamerican ones with tepary beans? Can you possibly use? These are, okay, the, uh, the tepary beans are, uh, it's a, uh, they're called the Mesoamerican the ones. Yeah, the tepary beans. Been able, I do have a PhD student, and he was able to develop some beans that can be used as a bridge, parent between the both you know, species. Cool. I think we will be making progress. Okay, uh, in order for us to, for, for me to achieve all of those objectives, uh, we have to, for example, we are evaluating the common bros, and this is done in Bersfield and also in Lincoln. And most of the most of our beans, they are carrying at least two arrows resistant genes. Uh, like you are three, four, six, and eleven. So there are some of the, the genes. Uh, we also we are conducting this is a bean common mosaic virus. These are the symptoms of the virus. This is sick transmitted. And over here we are collecting the, the tissue that is infected, and we are macerating, we are rubbing this in the primary leaves, and you see the reaction. This is a uh, this is called this is plant over here is carrying the uh, recessive gene for being common mosaic virus susceptible. But over here this plant is dying and this plant is carrying the dominant gene. And this 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 over here has a hypersensitive reaction to the to the uh, to the that particular strain of uh common mosaic virus. And over here you don't see much uh, symptoms, but there are some localized symptoms. And over here, this is a, this is a combination of a recessive gene with a dominant gene. That means the recessive genes are protecting the, this uh, dominant gene. And over here, you don't see any symptoms. This is the best combination. I mean, this is a, the recessive gene. It's called the BC3. It's protecting the I gene. I mean, that's, a, that's the goal. Man. And this is this over here, this is critical in the African continent. Because the plant is gonna be is 
This resistance has the dominant gene, but the plant is going to die. I mean, the grower is not going to be able to harvest any beans at all. This is called material blight. This is done in the, we have in the greenhouse. Uh, you see the inoculation here. This is a resistant reaction. This is a susceptible reaction. This is a, these are the symptoms. You see how bad they are. I mean, this is really bad disease. And uh, this is one of the cultures that I release coin. And it's a grain northern beans. You don't see, I mean, it's highly resistant to common bacterial blight. On the other hand, you see the commercial line and it's highly infested, infested with the you know, common bacterial blight. And over here is, uh, we had also done this in the, let's see if we can play this. Oh, I didn't go. Anyway, this is uh, done in, the, in one of the, our experimental location in North Platte. And it, these are two isolates, highly uh, virulent. Uh, we are doing the inoculation in, in the evening time. It's really hard to see, but there are, you know, some of the beans are showing susceptibility, but a lot of beans are showing resistance. We also, uh, this is part of the extension activities. We have the participatory variety selections. Um, this is, we conduct field days on, on farm, on the station trials, and also we are conducting the model and baby trials. And I did introduce this for SIM from CIMI, International Center for Maize and Wheat Improvement. And in case of the model trials, this is conducted in our experimental station, these are particular trials, and you have the, the line that you want to release, like for example, six, seven lines, that's lines. And they are tested in particular trials against all the commercial cultivars in that are available. And in case of the babies, you have those lines that you want to release, and they are tested in on farm trials, and this is tested in growth fields, and you are comparing with one or two local check in corn. This is a view of the baby of here. We have like six, seven lines over here. You see the red eight rows and the dog maybe 450 feet long plots. This is one, two, three, and then coming this way. And we are comparing here against the local check. Either in this case is one check here and the other check on the other side. And since I've been selecting for earlier, you can see, I mean, one of my, li my lines here, they're showing earliness compared to the, to the commercial cultivar. This is a view that, you know, that uh, over here, the, a lot of students are working with, with us anyway. And we are, uh, when they are working behind the planter, and we have a little vacuum cleaner as well as small generator. Once the planter runs out of the seed, we just vacuum out the seed and then dump the next one and keep going. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, anyway, part of the field days, as part of the extensions. This is, these are our winter nurseries. Um, this is uh, this year in Puerto Rico. This is one of the locations in Puerto Rico. That's other location in Puerto Rico. This, uh, it was in Puerto Rico, and this one was in Silla, and Silla. Uh, we would use marker assistant selection. Um, in this case, for example, these are for common bacterial blight. As you see, a lot of, a lot of line has the, this market for, for common bacterial blight. As well for being common cross, different genes, you are three, you are 11, and you see the being common mosaic virus. I mean, a lot of those lines have those markers. One thing that we can use with these markers, you see, for example, this line is lacking on the market, is uh, susceptible to common material blight, but in this particular line here has a different, or, or let's focus on this, in this has a, doesn't have a market, but has a, you know, gene potential, we can use it, and we will be crossing with something that has a market, and then, you know, hopefully we'll be able to introduce the this ecosystem. That's one of, you know, applications. Uh, but it, if it doesn't have anything, we can throw it away. We do participate in, we have national and regional, regional collaborations. Uh, I am the coordinator of the Cooperative Driving Nursery. This is done in eight states across the United States and also in Canada. I'm also the coordinator of the Driving Drought 
dry bean brown nursery. This is done in Washington, Michigan, Puerto Rico, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Uh, we had the uh, I'm participating in this uh, Midwest Regional Performance Nursery, North Dakota, Wyoming, and Nebraska, and there are other regional trials also co coordinating the variety trials from Nebraska across two locations. Okay, and now we are going more in details into my program. These are the within the different market classes. I I am working in when I joined the university, there were only Nortons and a little very few pintos, but I opened my program. I mean, we have reds, blacks, cranberries, kalima types, light red kini, dark red kini, and yellow pins. I mean, in total, there are around a thousand lines. I mean, you see the different generation, advanced, I have less numbers, intermediate, I and mean, you see the numbers, and we have more numbers in early generations, right? That's the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, last year, uh, during the Bean Day, I talked about 26 uh, elite lines, 12 Great Northern Beans, and 14 Pinto lines. And that's the average yield from 2015-17, ranging from 3,100 to almost uh, pretty close to 4,000 4, pounds per acre. In case of the Northerns and in case of the Pinto, they have a little higher yield potential, 3,200 to 4,200 pounds per acre. This is a, a recent, uh, my recent release, a hand of dry, green northern bean, has been common rust, has a UR3, UR6 uh, uh, resistant genes, has common bacteria blight, I mean, has also two markers, SU91 and SAP1. I mean, maybe it doesn't make sense to you, but it has a molecular markers as well as the IG4 bean common mosaic virus. It's a mid season variety. It's a larger seed, and this is one of my previous releases, a coin, and this line over here has a higher yield than the coin has it. And there is a foundation seed available for, hopefully we'll be able to grow for test between this in this uh, coming, growing season. Ongoing releases, uh, the, this is the first upright Great Northern cultivar. This is coming from Nebraska. I call this any one seventeen ten. I haven't named it yet. I have a two trust resistant gene, common material blight, in common side virus, and all and gel of course. First, the slot arcane being coming from the program, any two seventeen eighteen, three genes for uh being common rust with the molecular markers, intermediate reaction to being com uh, common material blight and, and it has a excellent seed quality. I'm releasing two drought tolerant lines. Uh, one is small red and one is small pinto. You see, I'm not working on a for can you know what is that bean production, but I'm being able to develop beans that can be grown on, on the volcanic condition all the I mean disease resistance as well as uh, drought tolerance. Uh, this is some data from last year. Advanced uh, Green Ordens being tested in Scott Plot and Mitchell. And uh, you can see here the commercial cultivar Marquis. This is my, my new release from Hundo Fry, Hydra, Coin. Uh, this is uh, Draco and Hades. And you see a lot, I mean, a couple of beans are even the statistical, the statistical the different from the, the commercial lines. I mean, you see, and this number they are matching. With a number with those 12 lines that I talked about before, we make that important anyway. You see, number six has a lot of, a lot of potential over here. And this is a yield from 2014 18, coming from uh, 16 different experiments. This is the line I'm talking about 32.1, and this is the yield, uh, 100 weight, and this is an upright. Compared to the high grade, you know, it's really, we really, are uh, really close, better than Draco, better than Aegis, the coin and the Fernando price. And it has a lot of potential. And the, this line was tested in Michigan, North Dakota, Nebraska, and Colorado in 2007. This is uh, 17, and this is a Midwest Regional Performance Nursery. This is uh, average yield. Uh, this, this, they're supposed to be in 100 seed weight. You see uh, 25.2, uh, 
I mean, it's a lot better than Marathon, and these are different experimental lines. I mean, it has a lot of potential in, in different states across the, you know, the states. Like, likewise, it's happening with the Pinto lines. You see here the commercial lines, La, La Paz, uh, you see Monterrey, Sinaloa, the Windbreaker, and here the Poncho. I mean, that's, I mean, there are outstanding lines here on the top, and they are, for example, this line are highly, I mean, has a high yield potential and a statistical different than from this line over here, like, for example, Monterrey and, and Sinaloa. And, is, and this number are matching with the numbers that I relate to those 14 lines that I uh, talked before. This is a yield data from, these are the, our slow darkening beans. I think we are growing one of those. I don't yeah. Know. With, with, yeah, this is the, for example, Vibram, Radian, Palomino, Stay Bright. These are a slow darkening. This is my slow darkening bean. And these are normal beans. This is the total number of environments. Although, like Vibram and Radian, they have a higher yield than my beans, but it's only coming from four you know, different environments. I tested in 12 environments. And they are, in general, the, I mean, the, what is that, the normal pinto bean has a little bit higher yield than, than the uh, slow darkening beans. Over here, you can see the C, number of seeds per farm. I mean, my bean is large. It's a large bean, and it's a very, it's a very heavy bean. Yes. In, in general, there are, there are about uh, 1,200 to you know, 1,300. And this is really heavy anyway. I mean, I'm really excited about this bean. Data from 2018. This is a cooperative driving nursery grown in Canada, uh, California, Michigan, North Dakota. I make some mistake here, Nebraska, Washington, and Wyoming. This is from Powell, Wyoming. You see our bean. I mean, compared to the, this is a, a slow darkening from North Dakota. This is a non darkening. Now we have non darkening. I mean, that is never going to dark. And then compared to the La Paz Otelo, these are a normal pinto beans. I mean, you see that the, you see all these three slow darkening. Our, our bean has a, you know, better yield or higher yields. And also, again, the seed is a lot larger than this. And even uh, across the different states, you'll see much different between the, like, for example, my line over here uh, compared with the past. I mean, there's so much different. It's only one bag of difference, but it's a lot better than hotel. Hotel is an early, early pinto bean. And this is my northern bean. It was, it was, uh, I couldn't compare with other beans because there was only one green northern bean ground in that time. So they have to compare with something else. I'm working with a, not only with those. Remember, I mentioned that I opened my program. I mean, I just uh, been working with nine different math classes. I just want to show the, for example, in case of the cranberry beans. And these are the commercial beans. This is Tolly, Puder, Belayo. Egna Capri. I mean, a lot of my experimental lines are has higher yield than the commercial checks. This is happening with all all, all the markets of classes as well. Lately, uh, this is a Kalima type. I I am originally from Colombia, and the Colombia is importing a lot of beans that coming from Ecuador mainly. And when I moved to the you know when I started working at the university. I say, why not to start working with the Kalima type? And right now, we see some of the, I mean, some of the beans, this is the, this is 27 bags anyway. These are the checks. I mean, I've been able to have better, better yield than the checks for the parental line, parental line that I've been using for. The only thing is that uh, it's a little bit later, you know, growing season, it's a uh, hundred and six days. I mean, that's the only downside for them, for these beans. And there is a company now in, in Colorado, in New York, and they are, we are right now, we're increasing top two of those lines. That we're increasing in New Zealand. We're going to be printing the seed and we're going to be testing larger scale to see, I mean, the adaptation to this, 
to be in Colorado. Yeah, well, what's the difference between Arcanos and Galma pipes as far as use, or is there a difference? Uh, these are these are larger beans. These are obviously the, the thing what I mentioned that the beans are from the like Middle America, also the Andean, you know, pipes anyway. There are larger beans. Uh, there are, these are red marble beans. Yeah. I mean, that has a red background. What color are they when they're cooked? Uh, they, 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 they turn to brown, yeah. 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 brown color. Yes. Uh -huh. but they look great. I got some of them out of the bag. They look great. Yeah. And, but and then they cook up just like regular beans. And, the, and they do they do taste different anyway. We like yeah. the we like the like for example the, Yeah. We like the our like the cranberry beans and we like the alina types and for example. Uh these are uh, these are more uh this thing over here, this is a uh, kind of uh as a determinate growth habit, they grow like a light routine. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, drought. Uh, this is one of the most limiting worldwide abiotic stresses. And severity of yield reduction depends on the timing and duration of the drought stress. Our uh, irrigation engineer mentioned, uh, he found that one of the most critical times is at the beginning of the growing season. Um, from previous studies, when I was working in Sierra, we found what one of the most critical timing was around flowering and when the beans were set in pots, right? Um, these are uh, projected changes in annual average temperature and precipitation by 2050. I mean, in all the projections, we are getting a little you know, warmer anyway, a couple degrees, five, six degrees in some places anyway. I mean, in the warmest, warmest condition, you are 20%. I mean, we are being, uh, getting this of five, six degrees. And in case the coolest, we are getting, you know, uh, increasing temperature about two, three degrees. And in case of the precipitation, I mean, you see here in Nebraska, over here in Wyoming, you see Colorado over here, there is no much change, a little bit, we are getting more, uh, a little bit more, a little bit more precipitation, but there are some places that, like for example, in case of the Colorado, they're gonna be. Uh, I mean, there's gonna be more problem with the with drought and the ground and bed. We are conducting this is on our experimental station over here. Uh, you see, from here up to here, we last year we didn't irrigate the beans at all, and, and they were able to go with. Uh, um, uh, 4.3 inches of total precipitation, no irrigation at all. Over here to the, it's going to be to the right, you see this thing thing uh, were uh, fully irrigated. I um, mentioned that I coordinated this uh, dry bean drought nursery, working at Chapel Brain between Puerto Rico and Nebraska. I mean, Chapel is how we are, uh, the, for example, the of the geneticists from USDA AIS in Puerto Rico is uh, making the crosses. We just advance the you know the beans in one generation in Puerto Rico, send it to me to Nebraska. I grow those beans in Nebraska under these conditions. And we do select the beans for not only for uh, droughts but for other trades for diseases. And whatever is selected in Nebraska, send it back to Puerto Rico, and then Puerto Rico is one of the key drought and diseases, and they will send it you know, back and forth anyway. I will use uh, my University of Nebraska lines, uh, as well as lines coming from SEAT. This is a view of the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. We are using Middle American and Indian diversity panels coming from this center of origin domestication. As well from the lines from, from this uh, chapter green. And this is data from Colorado, Nebraska, Washington, and this is Wyoming. This is in Lingo, I think Hegel, Hegel has been collaborating with us. You see uh, here, this is a small red that we are going to be releasing. This is a geometry mean, means, this is a, that's a, it's an index, 
I mean, it's giving us telling us that the, this bean over here is going well on the drought and non drought stress. I mean, and you see the yield have the highest yield and the yield reduction when you compare drought stress to non drought stress only 5.4%. You see the other lines, they have a, on average about 30% of yield reduction when you go from normal or irrigated to non irrigated conditions. I mean, you can see pinto beans. These are Colorado, they are wood, raw sand. These are Colorado beans. These are pinto line from Washington, anyway. And there are a couple, this is a Nebraska line, a very northern bean. Uh, we are monitoring how much uh, water are these plants uh, taking. Uh, we have uh, 9 inches, 18, and 30 inches. Uh, we are using water marks. Uh, you see some of the, this bean over here, uh, this is a Puerto Rico line. Line from Puerto Rico is depleting the water at 9 inches. I mean, it's taking the water. But the thing is happening at uh, an 18 and 30 inches, looks like the Bean is not taking much water at all. By the other hand, this is my northern bean over here. It's taking the, the water at 18, at 9 inches, 18 inches, and also start taking the water at 30 inches anyway. I mean, and this one has a high you know, yield. I mean, it's using the water. The ideal situation would be a bean is able to take less water and produce more, more beans. And this is the thing that happening with the on the normal condition over here, you know. I mean, you don't see much in this one. Do you have any issues with soil contact in the watermarks, like the soil separating from the centers? Yeah, I think there are some there are some issues that we're trying to solve with the, our irrigation engineer. I mean, but I think it has uh, uh, been able to get a better sensor. We're gonna be trying to yes. Yeah. Some of them they don't read it. You know, you don't get the ingredients and the do you have like a clay soil or is yours more sandy up there? They're more sandy. Sandy okay, soil. Okay, that would help because we're trying yes. to use them as a clay soil and it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you send me an, an email or, you know, yeah. I mean, we can visit our irrigation team and suggest the better sense of it. Great. Thank I you. I don't have a business card there anyway. Yeah, I'll pick it up. Okay. Um, co coming back to the, this is for the biofortification. This is an iron and zinc content. You see that beans in general, on the drought stress, they have higher content of zinc and, and iron. And it's happening for all the, you know, all the lines. Garbanzo. I'm working also with the garbanzo beans. And over here, you see that this is a susceptible reaction to a scopera blind. This is one of the major diseases. They were in, in, in Nebraska, they were about, about when I joined the university, 5,000 acres, and after one or two years, the acres came down to zero. No advances at all, anyway, because of the Ascocarab life. I was able to, I mean, be working and release a, I call it a new hope. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time, new hope for the region, anyway. You see, on the, this is 2012 protected and unprotected uh, experiments. I mean, there was some, uh, that, as you can apply, incidents. This is a commercial line, the CDC from here, CDC Orion is on the non protected susceptible, Sierra susceptible. This is uh, HD14 highest susceptible. This is one of the uh, general plasma lines that are released. It's really good for as you can apply. In 2015, we have more ascocara blight, but you see our line over here has less uh, ascocara blight compared to like in case of the CDC from here. I'm not saying that uh, there is no immunity, but this one it has a high, it's highly resistant to uh, ascocara blight. I think somehow we are uh, our plant pathologist, Bob Carpenter, I don't know if you heard about him or not. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's working with this hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide, mm -hmm. kind of sunny day, and can be used for you know, protecting again. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of like, I mean, you grow this garbanzo, and then you spray, you know, once with a hydrogen peroxide, you're going to get, you know, higher uh, protection. I do believe in team <laughs> or family, work approach. <laughs> 
I mean, obviously, I'll have people from all over the place. I mean, well, Michigan, Nebraska, North Dakota, anyway, a private industry, uh, people from uh, Washington, Puerto Rico. And this is our network. Um, actually, we are supposed to be having here at the University of Wyoming. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I do have a YouTube uh, blog with me, anyway, you want to take. I have some handouts. One is about chip production, chip peak production. The other one is chip peak in Western Atlantic, one of the uh, experiments that we conducted a few years ago, uh, released the new hope. And we have a plant population goal spacing. We try different plant populations, in the case of the dry beans, border a uh, different plant population within, within three different row spacing, like this thing, 22 and 30 row spacing. And I do have the release of the 105, I mean, the new grain organ. And also, we have a 2018 variety trials we sold from Nebraska. And I have my business staff, and you are most welcome to take if you want to. Any questions? No. Well, the, the small kidney, the small kidney, what was the reason to breed for a small kidney? I see in the one earlier. Is there some particular reason to go for that smaller size? Like, like this one? I was one of the pinnacle beans. Um, if you bred, uh, bred for a smaller size, a very small size pinnacle bean. I think, that, let's see, when I, I mean, I've been working in beans for so long anyway, and I remember that even the main organs and the, and the, the pinto beans, they were larger beans and they were huge. Uh, now that every time, every day is getting smaller and smaller. One of the reasons could be because we're using like uh, Mesoamerica beans, I mean the black beans and the red beans, because the plant architecture is coming from those. I mean, we've got the input uh, and that could be one of the reasons that that's why some of the beans are getting smaller and smaller. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. But it used to be big and huge. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about um, in the in the early slides? You clearly identified that you were making hybrids. Are yes. all of the cultivars that you've released hybrids, or is some of them open pollinated? Um, and what is the process of patenting these and and people being able to grow them? Okay. Because I mean, organic in particular, and I'll just give uh -huh. you some. A lot of people really like open pollinated, they really like seed and seed. Yes. So, what is your relationship with that, and how is that in your breeding program? I mean, beans are 100%, or I would say 99.9% self pollinated. Are self -pollinated. I mean, that's just one, one thing. Mm -hmm. Right. When we're, when we're releasing the, uh, sorry, releasing the, the bean uh, cultivar, the bean cultivar has to be at least 99.9% homozygous. Okay. When I talk, talking about homozygosity, means the bean has to have the same maturity, mm -hmm. but, I mean, all the plants at the same plant height, the color of the flower, flower has to be the same, the same seed type, the same you know, shape, and so on. Anyway. More common in hybrids than in open pollinated? Yeah, the, the hybrids are, the hybrids are, when you talk about hybrids, it's like, for example, corn right. or maize, it's right. you know, you have to sell the hybrid seed. But, and, okay, but one, one, another thing. In case of the beans, okay, when in case of the let's, let's talk about the maize, when you make one pollination, you can get with one pollination, you can get up to 250 seeds, right? Mm -hmm. But in case of the beans, when I do the pollination, I can get like three or four seeds at the most. Right. See? I mean, that's a, that's a huge, I mean, huge difference. In right. So are, so, are your cultivars all hybrids? No, no. They are all open pollinated. No, no, my cultivars are. Uh, I would so say self-pollinated, and they are... Uh, self-pollinated is the flower architecture, right? So like, what about, like if I wanted to grow your beans and I saved your beans and planted them again, they would look the same. Yeah, they, 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 look, they, would, they would be looking the same, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. You're supposed to be kind of old. You can save some seed, right? Or to, I don't know, five years. Yeah. We did save our own seed. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Had, uh, <laughs> we got it advanced the first time out. Right. 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 
turned right. out to be. Right. And there was no uh, traffic protection. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the things is with the you know, this, you know, I mean, the, the cooking that I'm developing, I think uh, I would say that I'm suitable for organic farming production because they have the the other thing in organics is uh, slow release nitrogen because they mm -hmm. don't use as many fast release nitrogen. Are you what kind of fer fertility are you doing when you're doing your selections? Uh, we are working on uh, I think our recommendation is uh, about 60 pounds of nitrogen mm -hmm. per acre. What kind of nitrogen are you using? Uh, we're using urea. So, right. urea, that's it. I mean, so I'm just saying, if you wanted to go further with organic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just cut out that urea and then select into those situations. Yeah. 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 Oh, and my last part of the question was um, Mark Brick, it says you did retire. Yes. So are you going to be getting tons more requests from Colorado growers being growers now, or are you working more with Colorado growers? Because I don't think CSU is replacing them, right? I think I've been replaced with uh, what's the name, Maria. I don't recall her last name, anyway, but she's uh, focusing on no need in being, but in the craft Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, our the commission, what is that? Uh, uh, Colorado, yeah, Colorado Driving Commission has been approached to us anyway, and they are kind of giving us some, you know, some money anyway to start Good. working with them. All right. And we'll also, we. And I think the Wyoming also commission is approaching you to the Nebraska commission to uh -huh. see if we can work together. Okay. There was the idea of, of a consortium between Idaho, uh -huh. Idaho, Idaho doesn't have a freedom anymore, uh -huh. uh, Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska. I mean, there was some conversation going on anyway. Uh, Nebraska say a step out, you know, out of the, this. I didn't want to be part of the, um, one of the reasons is because the, like Nebraska University, are, you know, I am the breeder and we have people with, in different disciplines working in beans. Mm -hmm. not, not 100% in beans, but they are, you know, there's plant pathology, yeah. uh, irrigation, right. extension people and so on anyway. And the other universities were more invested in, you know, yeah. in, in, in dry beans. But you're the only breeder in the region. Uh, right so now, yes, I am going to one in the okay. You're not going to retire in time soon, right? No, 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 yes. Thanks, sir. That's happening around the country. Yeah, and then our breeder, public breeding program. Yeah, oh, yeah. That yeah. Plus, and then we'll be placing it. We're trying to get more money from this team. Yeah. We're probably trying to help our development. There's a lot of things that have gone on the different programs. Mm -hmm. There's more money for organic research, though. We're looking for organic research. Yeah. Yeah. more money. Or yeah. 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 Are you? Do you use them in a rotation? Do they fit yeah. well in a crop rotation? Where do they fit? Yeah. What do they? What go? What comes before and after the work? In Illinois, you can go with that small range early mm -hmm. on, and the next spring, you plant the bean. I'll go right in behind the bean harvest. Okay. Do you have yeah. bean in your field? I have some issues with it, and I pull them out of the rotation. And I just right now we're working with the uh, big man sorghum. Uh -huh. uh, the, the last so, one we cut the sorghum down three times. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get a good mass section development. We didn't uh -huh. have much trouble with Canadian thistle. We figured out several ways to combine these. Advice to some things work real well, some things don't. So we we present those um, on about ten acres. We had the combines come here and we just got locked up in that binding. We had some like classes in there to the combines to pick it up. We don't have that problem with our other big crop, but for us, beans and prejudice are really difficult. So I was just wondering if we had that problem. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. So get on top of our binding. We don't go to any of the other things that we track. Do you see those in your trials or are you spraying for weed control? Uh, actually, well, I mean, I I think I mentioned, I did mention, I think I'm not working with that. I mean, I'm not doing any organic spray. I mean, it's kind of related uh, since I'm developing the internet from the super system. I like yeah, that's super important. I've got all the other things anyway. I mean, yeah, but we do, I mean, we do a spray anyway for, and we have uh, people working on, I mean, like not only for our but it helps. Well, do you think it would be possible to breed? Dry beans for weed competition? 
Is that a trait that dry beans could be improved upon? Yes, they can be improved. Because yeah. that would also be an improvement. <laughs> 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 I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> Uh, some, some of the beans they grow faster than more beans. They can uh -huh, grow right. faster than beans. They can grow faster than beans. Okay. So we got your list. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 We, we invited you here to make you into organic green beans. My, 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 wife, <laughs> my wife is making the list. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is a great idea.